Hey guys, welcome back to another Fairy Tale Friday where I share with you uh, stories from Indonesia, right? Children's stories that are used to to shape the thinking of Indonesian people from the time they're really small to instill morals into them. Today's Fairy Tale Friday is dedicated to my very favorite cousins, Micah, Kayleen, Evie, and Timmy. Right? They live in Penn Valley, California. And so today, guys, this story is for you. Now, today's story is about the origin of sea cows, right? Sea cows are really cool animals. They are herbivores, meaning that they only eat plants. And they're mammals, right? Meaning that they breathe air like, like people do or like cows on land do. And uh, they never leave the water. Right? They give birth in the water. And that's where they live all the time. They're also really big, right? Sea cows uh, can be seven and a half to 12 feet long and can weigh around 3,000 pounds. And so this is the story of where they came from or the legend of where they came from. Right? so a long time ago, there was a bunch of chickens that tried to get run over by a motorcycle. No, that's not how the story goes. How's the story go? Yes, a long time ago, there was a family of five. And a father, a father, a wife, and three children. Now, they made their living by fishing and farming. Well, one morning, the father came in from fishing, and he had caught a whole bunch of fish. Right, so his wife took those fish and she cooked them up for him for breakfast and there was just too many for the family to eat in one meal. Right, so the father asked her to save the fish for uh, the evening meal for him. Well, she agreed to do that and, and she put the fish away for him. They all, they all went away and, and started doing their, their regular chores that they needed to do. Around lunchtime, right, the mom and the children, well, they came back home to have lunch. And the youngest child, right, he asked to have fish. Well, the mom explained to him that they didn't have any fish to eat for lunch, that the only fish they had was the fish that was saved for the father for his dinner. Well, the kids started throwing a fit, right? I mean, was crying and was screaming and was just throwing himself down on the floor and rolling around. Well, because the mother, right, was weak, she couldn't say no to the child and she ended up giving in to his fit. Well, she gave the kid the dad's fish. And he grabbed those fish and, and he just started scarfing them down like a greedy little pig. Well, evening came and the dad came home and then he wanted to eat his fish. So we asked the mom for his fish and she explained to him the situation and what had taken place earlier that day and that they didn't have any fish. She asked for forgiveness for giving the fish to the whiny kid. Well, he got, and he got extremely angry with her and told her to get out of the house. They had to go down to the beach and to catch some fish and to replace the fish that she gave to that greedy little kid. Well, she was broken hearted, right? That he would, he would treat her that way. But she left the house and she started heading back down there to the, heading down to the beach to catch the fish. Well, she was so broken hearted, right? That, that she didn't even care if she, she drowned down there at the beach. Well, she didn't come back that night, all the next day either. And so the kids, right, they went down to the beach looking for her. The youngest one, right, they got the fish. Well, he was still nursing at the time. And so he was crying and hollering and, and just carrying on, right, because he wanted to nurse. He's crying out for his mom, 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 where are you? Well, I mean, they were happy and shocked at the same time right, to see their mom come up out of the water. She was all soaking wet. and Well, she came over to the kids and she nursed the youngest one and, and told them to go back home. And then she'd be home as soon as she caught the fish. So they obeyed her and they went back home. Well, she didn't come home that night either. 
or the next day. So the kids went back down to the beach again to look for their mom and they're crying out, Mom, Mom, where are you? Well, she came back up out of the water again, but this time, right, she had scales all over her, like fish scales. The kids were shocked and scared by this, and and so they started backing away from her, and she's trying to explain to them, no, I'm your mom, and I'm your mom, look, here, here, this is the evidence, I'm your mom. And the oldest child speaks up and says, uh, our mom, our mom is beautiful. Our mom has smooth skin, and she doesn't have skin like you. And so as she approached the, the kids, right, to try to start nursing the youngest one, they all screamed and ran away. A little while later, they, they came back down to the beach looking for their mom because, you know, they didn't believe that she was really their mom. Well, they're crying out for her, Mom, Mom, where are you? She comes back up out of the water again. This time, she's got even more scales than she had last time. And so the kids scream, right? And they run away. Ah! They go back down again, right? The same thing happens over and over again as they go searching for their mom. Until finally, the last time, they go down to the beach looking for her and... They cry out for her and she comes up out of the water. Right, but this time, this time her legs have grown together and she has a flipper for feet. She's been turned into a mermaid. Well, the kids just, just freak out and, and they run home and she slips back into the water and swims away, never to be seen of again. And so the people, in central Sulawesi believe that the sea cows in their area originated from that one woman who was turned into a mermaid right many years ago. Now there is an intended moral to the story. Right? And I'm not going to tell you what that is right now. I'll tell you next week. But I want you to guess what you think the intended moral to the story is. Now I'm supposed to tell you about last week's story, what the intended moral for that story is. Now you remember the story, right? The story with the crocodile and the shark who were always fighting, right? who made a peace treaty. But the shark broke the peace treaty and, and he came up and was hunting in the river. So they got into another fight and the crocodile won. And he won the right to hunt at sea and on the land. Well, the moral of the story, right? I was, uh, I was thinking was something probably along the lines of, right? Uh, don't break your peace treaty, otherwise you're gonna get stomped. I mean, that seemed like a pretty good moral to the story to me. Or maybe something like, you know, keep your promises, right? Something along those lines. But that's not the more intended moral of the story. And this is the intended moral of the story. Peace is beautiful. And, and, and fighting and quarreling always bring about loss. Even when you think you've won, right, you've still suffered loss and been damaged by the fighting. Therefore, and therefore you should always try to settle your differences in a moral way without quarreling and fighting. That's the intended moral of the story, according to the authors of the book that I am translating from. And so, until next time, this is Writing Java, and I'll talk to you later. Thanks for writing with me.